Hey, cats, we're back again this week on the Balls from Elwood show. Uh, first off, I'd like to apologize for the delay. I know uh, we missed a few weeks there. Uh, that's largely due to the fact, cats, that uh, I have to say, Balls is under an absorbent amount of holiday stress. I have a fucking migraine like you wouldn't believe. I don't normally let the holiday season get to me like this, but I tell you what, uh, this year has been fucking insane. I have to tell you, cats. Uh, Running around, I mean, uh, work is always, uh, as most people's uh, time of year, uh, is always busy this year. I mean, uh, it, it's, just been, it's just been completely insane, but enough on that. Uh, I'm just going to jump right in. This is the Balls from Elwood Christmas show. Uh, I was hoping to have a bunch of like cool and fun guests for you this, uh, you know, this week, cats, but I mean, uh, as you know, much as the holiday season goes, everybody's busy and uh, things didn't quite pan out, but I can in fact tell you, I got a couple really cool confirmations for the future coming up in the next few weeks, so you're going to definitely want to tune in for them because I have a couple cool guests coming up that you surely don't want to miss. But that being said, uh, I have to say, the holiday season always is insane to me. I always think it's, uh, you know, ridiculous that the blatant consumerism that people go through and the lengths to, in which they go, you know, to get all this bullshit for people, man. Like, I am uh, one of those dudes that's like, if I want something during the year, I just get it. I don't, uh, I don't expect people to, uh, go crazy and, you know, uh, dedicate all this time to trying to find me something that special rate gift. I mean, uh, I, I am actually more of a dude that I'm, uh, I'm happy, uh, with, uh, fellowship and friendship and, you know, bullshitting. And, uh, I'd be more than inclined to go to a dinner and sit down and, you know, have, just have a, you know, important time and have a few laughs with people and, uh, you know, worry about all that other, uh, you know, consumeristic bullshit. I mean, don't get me wrong. I do greatly appreciate when people, get me things, uh, you know, it's very thoughtful, but I mean, uh, I just often feel like the true meaning of the holiday is misconstrued, but, uh, for instance, I mean, I, I gotta notice, this year I have to address this, cats, uh, uh it's, it's been on my mind for quite a while now, I couldn't wait to get back on the air to, to, you know, hash this out with you, I mean, it seems like this year everybody is fucking butthurt over everything, I've never witnessed a Christmas in my 42 years, that's right, I'm 42. Uh, it's depressing. But I've never, witnessed, I've never witnessed a Christmas in my 42 years where people are so fucking butthurt and pussy hurt. Like, I don't understand. Everything is a fucking issue, man. Like, you know, I, I, I go on the, the news every day and there's something new. I mean, it all started with, uh, I believe, uh, I mean, I, I don't know if it was Baby It's Cold Outside, that bullshit. I mean, uh... I grew up on that song my whole life growing up, and not once did I ever read into it that, like, it's rapey. I mean, uh, it, it just seemed like a dopey old song. Like, I mean, I get it. I, I always I always interpreted it as there's a dude, and you know you know, dudes are, you know, uh, horny all the time. I mean, uh, but I mean, I, I just interpreted it was a couple, and uh, they were spending some quality time together, and the weather is bad, and... Uh, yeah, he didn't want her to leave. Like, he wanted her to stay and cuddle, and, you know, I don't know, maybe later he decided to get into her pants. I, I don't know uh, what he had in mind, but in that particular song, it just seemed like uh, two people enjoyed being together to me, and, uh, you know, they just didn't, uh, he didn't want uh, her to leave. So, I mean, uh, is that naive of me? I don't know. But uh, growing up, I never read that. I just feel, I just feel like everybody's so fucking hell-bent on over over reading in the shit nowadays like i mean you can overread into anything you can make anything fucking uh ridiculous like that if you if you read into it enough i mean uh what do you think cats i mean uh give me your opinion on all this i mean i got plenty more to touch on but you know bear with me and uh you know give me your uh input uh the email address is always the same it's uh wendy chops at 1970 i'm sorry wendy chops 1976 at gmail.com. Once again, that is WendyChops1976 at gmail.com. It's always been the same since the very first show. Never changed. That is our show email. Uh, not to get away from the point, but real quickly, I would like to touch on uh, something you may not know. is uh, I uh, launched a YouTube channel, 
So if you just type in Balls from Elwood, you click on videos, every single episode from the very first, back when I was on Gonzo Podcast Network, till the very, till this one. Well, I mean, uh, if you subscribe, you'll get them up to date uh, every time there's a new episode. And uh, yeah, it's something I work very hard on and I'm very proud of, so I would appreciate you cats to go on over there and hit subscribe. And uh, if you enjoy checking out the show, you can check it out there. You could check it out in a plethora of places. I mean, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, iTunes, uh, Google Play, Twitter. Uh, yeah, I'm working on Periscope, uh, you know. Uh, I mean, there's just so many different places. I mean, uh, I mean, I'll just keep you posted. But, uh, I, you know, for now, that's a really cool place to, uh, to check out the show. Plus, I have cool little content, like uh, whenever people do bumpers for my show... Uh, I'll put the video up there, because, I mean, often you only hear the audio, so it's kind of cool to see the video. But back to what I'm saying, I don't want to get too far off the beaten path here, uh, due to the simple fact that this whole uh, butthurt Christmas this year is ridiculous. Everybody's got their panties in a bunch, and I don't feel like, you know, it's it's warranted. It's really stupid. Like, I mean, I heard, I've watched Rankin and Bass's Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer probably every single fucking year since I've been a child. Not once. Have I, have I gotten anything out of it other than something positive, man? But, like, this year, now it's like, uh, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer is bullied, and it's teaching kids that uh, the only way you'll be productive is if, uh, you know, you, you, you pretty much com comply to, uh, you, know, what, you know, I guess what Santa says and, like, uh, what everybody else does. Like, more or less, you can't, you know, unless you're, uh, unless you fit in and comply to everybody else, you're... You know, you're not wanted unless you have something unique to bring to the table. So, I mean, I, I just, I've heard so much dumb bullshit about it. Maybe I'm getting it wrong, but it was just as equally as retarded as all the shit that I've been hearing. So, I mean, not once have I ever seen this kid show and, and thought anything. I mean, if anything, I had always interpreted him as being a hero because, you know, when you watch it, uh, you know, he's not a regular reindeer. He's got like a special kind of talent. And he saves the fucking day. Like, that's that's what I got from it. Not all this other fucking bullying bullshit. And, it, you know, it, you can't it, you can't be yourself. And you gotta try to be like everybody else. And it, you, I, I just don't get it, man. Like, everybody's fucking insane. Uh, I mean, like I said, I mean, anything could be interpreted in that fashion. But, I mean, moving right along. I mean, uh, it makes me laugh. I mean, uh, I always... Uh, I always think about that stuff, and I always loved Rankin and Bass. I mean, I'm still a fucking fan of theirs. I I like their little-known Halloween one. I mean, everybody has seen the Christmas stuff they have did, but little few people have seen, uh, you know, Mad Monster Party. I mean, they did a stop-motion animation thing for Halloween, and I always thought that was brilliant. And, you know, people don't, uh, you know, don't even know about that one. But, I mean... It, it does make me laugh, though. I mean, and all these Rankin and Bass ones, they do kind of have the same formula, and it always is kind of funny. I wish, I mean, don't you wish your problems in life were like a Rankin and Bass-like episode where they're all stop-motion animation and goofy? And I mean, uh, if you notice the one unique thing, and it's like the, you know, the the, the moral and the uh, the routine in every show is there's a problem presented. But then they'll sing a shitty song about it, and then everything's fucking perfect after that. It just takes care of itself. I wish my fucking problems in life were like that, man. I wish it was that easy. I mean, let's just say you come home from work one day, you walk in and your old lady, your beloved fucking the mailman. Don't you wish you could just fucking start singing like Rankin and Bass, you know? You know, and it has to be like Burl Ives, like, you know, uh, and that little fucking beatnik snowman, you know, uh. The one with the soul patch, and he, uh, you know, it's Burl Lives, and he's fucking singing Holly Jolly Christmas. I mean, that's what it'd have to be like, you know. You'd have to, you, you'd have to have a song about it to fucking fix it, you know. Uh, it'd be like, uh, come on, man, she's boning the mailman. What a shitty time of week. They're slapping holes, and don't you know, my legs are feeling weak. I gotta find a place to hide the bodies, and then I'll dig a hole. Hey, now, have a holly jolly Christmas. But bam, everything's fucking fixed, you know. You got two dead bodies hidden, and uh, you get away with murder. But, I mean, uh, uh, don't you wish everything could be that easy? I mean, uh, you got to use that shit to your advantage. I mean, uh, 
you know, anytime, you know, you hear you're in the middle of a fucking homicide, the, the little beatnik snowman comes out, you know, crack him on the head with a shovel, then you grab your rope. Tie them tight and wait till night when the neighbors go to sleep. I mean, that's what I'm talking about, man. Uh, what warlock shit produced these creepy, godless, talking, goateed, fucking beatnik snowmen, man? I mean, don't even get started. What kind of witchery produces these little motherfuckers? I mean, I wish life could be that easy, you know? Like, you're... You're like, you know, fuck this shit, I've had enough, you know, uh, and the fucking beatnik snowman comes out, you know, uh, hey, get off that stool and don't hang yourself, things will be better next week, you know, hey, it's just ridiculous, man, I, uh, I just noticed in every fucking rank of the best, like, I wish life could easily be fixed by a song, you know, I mean, sometimes shit just isn't that, uh, you know, isn't that fucking easy, I mean, one minute you're, Walking in the woods, minding your own business. Next thing you know, these fucking icy hippie assholes are fucking singing and turning your life lessons into the goddamn ice capades. I mean, uh, I'm warning you, motherfuckers, you little beatnik fucks. If I'm in the woods and you pull that shit on me, I'm going to piss on you until you're nothing but gargling, singing, fucking steaming puddles, you assholes. So, beatnik snowmen, stay the fuck away from me. That's what Balls has to say. Uh, coming up next, I mean, uh, we actually... I have a ton of shit to talk about, cats. I mean, uh... After my bitch and about Rankin and Bass, uh, I've actually I seen a really fucking cool flick uh, I'd like to talk about. Uh, I finally got the opportunity to see uh, the new Lars Van Trier's film, uh, The House That Jack Built. I mean, I know this isn't really so much Christmas related, but I did want to give a really brief review. I do think you cats should check it out if you, hey, if you dig him. I mean, I had always... Thought he was a pretty shocking dude. I wasn't. I was on the fence as to whether or not I was a fan, but I guess I really am because I do look forward to, you know, every film when when he has a has a new film out that's released. I mean, he always always seems to reel me in. So I mean, this one stars Matt Dillon. Uh, he plays the titular character Jack. He's a serial killer, and I mean, I uh, he, it's it, I don't want to give too much away, man. Like I have to say, his performance is amazing. Uh, if you if you want to clearly uh, see what you you know from A to B like uh, from I guess A to Z mind you from what the inner workings I think what a serial killer would be in his mind like you know an explanation I mean in his mind his killings are an art so like you almost wonder how people could be that way and like how they rationalize things and I mean I thought this film did a good job of of just that and I mean uh, not I mean. The, the, uh, there's times where it's blackly comic, there's times where it's just absolutely revolting, and there's times where it's uh, super hard to watch, and, and there's times where it's, uh, you know, it's, it's you know, very uh, poignant. So, I mean, uh, I, I really, really enjoyed it, but as with most of his films, like, you have to digest it. I mean, there's just so much to wrap your head around after you watch it. It's not something where you can watch it and be like, I loved it. Like, you, you, once you watch it, you're going to have this processing time for, for pretty much your brain to catch up because there's just that much to, that much, you can't, your brain can't take that much level of, like, absurd, fucked up, you know, craziness without, like, you know, pro processing it properly as to whether you liked it or not. I, I, I found that the more I thought about it and the more as time went on, I, I definitely think it's going to stick with me. I definitely think it's one of his better films. I actually really, really enjoyed it thoroughly. So, I mean, uh, it's very long. It's like two hours and I think 30, 40 minutes long, but I mean, don't let that deter you. Uh, I definitely, I was pretty riveted, man. Like, I was super beat from the work week and uh, I started it late and I tell you what, I didn't uh, didn't go to bed till like 3.30 in the morning because I wanted to see how it ended. So, I mean, uh, that says a lot for me right there. But uh, that's my quick review of the house to Jack built, I definitely feel you catch should check it out. Again, it's not Halloween related, but being that I'm talking about film, uh, I mean, there is plenty of uh, traditions and things I do enjoy uh, watching uh, during the holidays. I mean, uh, yeah, I'm a proclaimed self-proclaimed uh, horror nerd, so I mean, uh, there's if you want to get into just the holiday horror, I love and I watch during the Christmas season. I love... Uh, I just sat down and I was watching Jack Frost the other night uh, with the Killer Snowman. I always get a kick out of that film. I don't think that film gets enough love for sure. 
I also love Black Christmas, of course. That takes place during, uh, you know... I like uh, Silent Night, Deadly Night. I do enjoy the remake. I mean, I, I, well, I, I know that's surprising, but I actually really do get a kick out of Silent Night. I thought uh, that was a decent reimagining of that. You know, I even like the Black Christmas remake. I mean, it's a little... You know, it's a, kind of a different animal, but it's still pretty cool. Uh, I watched a... You know, a somewhat decent holiday horror anthology. I watched this movie called All the Creatures Were Stirring. Uh, you know, there's four stories and a wraparound. Uh, I would say check out the first two stories. Uh, the last two stories I thought were really fucking stupid. I mean, yeah, I, I, you know, I would check out the first two. I mean, I, it's it's very cheap. I mean, my buddy said he picked up a copy of Walmart. I'd actually watched it on Shutter. But, I mean, for six bucks, it's definitely worth picking up. Uh, you know, there's not enough holiday horror, uh, horror anthologies, I think. But uh, uh, one I actually got turned on to a couple years ago I liked was, I think it was called A uh, Christmas Horror Story. And the wraparound was William Shatner was a DJ. And, you know, it goes into, I think there's a story about Krampus. Uh, there's a story about... Uh, you know, seeing as elves getting some zombie virus. That one was actually, it sounds stupid, but it was actually pretty cool. But like, And then there's like, you know, I don't want to give the whole thing away, but there's it's really cool. If you have a chance to check that out on any streaming site or uh, you pick it up cheap, uh, definitely check that one out. Uh, I'm trying to think what else. Like, I watch a lot of Mystery Science Theater. I like the uh, Santa Claus Conquers the Martians. I watch, I've been watching that since as a kid every Christmas. That's uh, definitely a tradition at my house. Uh, and also the Mike Nelson uh, MST3K Santa Claus. It was a, a dopey, I think it was a Spanish movie. And, uh, you know, Santa Claus fights Pitch, the devil in it. And I always think that's pretty fucking funny. So, yeah, I mean, other than that, uh, I mean, what else? Uh, like, I like Christmas episodes from, like, different shows. I mean, there was a nice, I think it was, a, was it The Grither? I think it was a Tales from the Dark Side. There was a Christmas episode. Uh, you know, there's uh, Christmas episodes of pretty much any uh Oh, I can't even forget. I mean, probably one of the best crafted ones, and I still love it to this day. I've loved it since I was a kid. It is by far uh, the very pilot episode of Tales from the Crypt. I think it was it. Uh, was it called To All a Good Night? Anyway, I, I might be wrong, but uh, it was uh, the very first pilot episode of Tales from the Crypt, and it had. Uh, what the fuck's his name? I can never remember his name. He was in Dark Knight the Scarecrow. He was Dr. Giggles. Uh, that, that dude, he was a fucking deranged killer Santa Claus that escaped a mental institution. And he's, uh, you know, he's stalking this broad uh, and her, her kid. Uh, he, she just got done killing her husband. And uh, it just so happens he happens to happen upon her and start stalking her during this uh, on Christmas Eve. And I, I think to this day it holds up. I still think it's very suspenseful. And if you have an opportunity, uh, you got to check that one out. That's really cool. I mean, again, I mean, uh, I, I could go on all day, but those are just like uh, a little cross section of things I like to watch during the holidays. I mean, uh, uh, you know, besides all your, you know, Rankin and Bass and Elf and Christmas Story and, uh, you know, all that other bullshit that people like. I like Scrooge a lot, but. Uh, Christmas Vacation. So, I mean, all the stuff that people generally kind of watch every year on top of that. So, And we're back, cats. I had, uh, as we touched upon last year, what Christmas special could possibly be good if you don't have a little bit of Santa porn? So, I compiled a couple clips this year that I think are absolutely hysterical. I'm not going to ever complicate things. We're just going to play a little bit of Santa porn. Uh, you know, I think in this clip, uh, this chick wants to bang Santa. I mean, it doesn't get much plainer than that. So let's dive right in. Santa porn, kids. Check it out. Ho, ho, holy cow. Look at that Mary Holmes. Merry Christmas, Santa. You know, like that. Bury your face in my fucking chest, yeah. <laughs> Good job, Santa. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Come and sit on Santa's lap and tell me what you want for Christmas. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, mm -hmm. yes. <laughs> mm -hmm. What I want for Christmas is a big fucking clock. Mm -hmm. Can I get that for Christmas? Mm -hmm. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Mm. Mm. And I do want all my presents I should have had. 
Santa, I really just want your big North Pole in between my tits. And I gave you an early Christmas present letting you suck these big fucking tits. You know, let me suck that big fucking cock. Yeah. Come on, Santa. Santa, your cock tastes like fucking candy canes. Well, Cass, what'd you think of that one? I mean, I don't want to ruin the whole story here, but I definitely think she's going to be on the naughty list. <laughs> Not only that, I, I don't want to ruin how it ends, but I think he might probably come on her face. Uh, Santa might come on her face. So hopefully that didn't ruin things for you. Uh, coming up in this next clip, Santa catches a shoplifter at the mall, and wackiness ensues. So let's... Uh, Let's tune in and see what's going on over here. I think uh, Santa might have caught a shoplifter. So let's check this one out. <laughs> You've been naughty, little girl. You can put your purse on the table. <clears throat> what are you shoplifting? Why are you shoplifting around this time of I, year? I wasn't trying to. I. Aren't you afraid to be naughty? Look, can I please just go? I'm sorry. Please just let me go. Just know how things work around here. We're we'll gonna have to conduct a strip search here. I have nothing. Are you serious? How do I know that? Uh, whoa, 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 whoa! What are you doing? Please have a seat. It's part part of the procedure. You know what? I'm just gonna do this just because I want to leave. It's a good girl. So what do I have to do exactly? Oh, well, you just have to let me sneak down your chimney. That's all. Why don't you go down your knees right here? Have you, uh, have you heard of Rudolph? I, yeah. Uh, I have to. Is that how you do it? Come on. Make uh, Rudolph happy. I got red nosed reindeer. I got red nosed dick. I think you like fucking Santa. Tell me you like fucking Santa. You broke my candy cane. How did I open it? Oh, the lengths young and impressionable women will do to knock in on Santa's naughty list, cats. Oh, remind me to never steal the purse. What the heck, cats? Let's do one more Santa porn clip. Why not? Uh, this we're going to pick up. It's a chick. She is jamming uh, candy canes in her pussy and her asshole. And uh, she happens to hear Santa Claus come in and wackiness ensues. Uh, yeah, I figure we got one more. Let's do one more Santa porn clip. Why not? Uh, this is uh, Christmas after all. This is uh, the gift that keeps on giving. So tune in. Ho, ho, ho. Santa? Hi, Santa. 
Ho, 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 little girl. Tell me, have you been a good girl this year? Well, maybe not good, but I've done naughty really nicely. Well, tell me, what can Santa get you this year for Christmas? Well, since I've been good all year, I could really, really use a good present. But let's go with a big, fat cock. A big, fat cock? Yeah, Santa. All I want for Christmas is a big, fat cock. A big, fat cock. Well, I think Santa can help you with that. Looks like Santa's work here is done. Oh. Ho, ho, ho! Oh. And there you have it, folks. Um, I think that's Santa's little way reminding us all that it's better to give than receive. <laughs> Coming up next in the Balls from Elwood show, uh, as I said before, we got ex Tina and her depravity corner, and she'll be coming up next. And we're back, cats. Uh, this week again, we have you know her, you love her, ex Tina and her depravity corner. Hi there. You almost forgot about me. I mean, it's been a while. It has been. We've had a couple a couple weeks off, and I have to say it's getting it's kind of rusty getting back into the groove. But I think we'll uh, we'll be okay. We're getting it done. We will. So much um, sticking with the theme here of um, I guess a Christmas special. We will um, have our Christmas depravity, and you know, balls thought that I couldn't come up with anything, and whew, Unfortunately, uh, there's a crap ton of Christmas depravity out there, people. So be careful around your family on Christmas. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, give this here a whirl. We have, back in 2008, on Christmas Eve, we have a Mr. Bruce Pardo, who was dressed in a Santa suit. He knocked on the door of his former in-law's house. His wife, he and his wife had been divorced for approximately, I think the divorce was finalized on December 18th. And so apparently he didn't take this too well. <laughs> so he decided to dress up like Santa Claus, show up to his ex-in-law's house where there's about 25 people. And he had a gift-wrapped package containing... A homemade flamethrower and a nine millimeter semi automatic gun in another hand. He also had three additional semi automatics. He fired the handgun at the eight year old daughter of a woman, uh, his, I guess it would be his niece or his ex niece. Um, apparently, she didn't die. Um, but he definitely threw a flamethrower, sprayed gasoline. Nine people died, either from gunfire or flames. And three others were wounded. The eight-year-old girl who was shot in the face, I'm sure her face is ruined forever. Isn't that nice? A 16-year-old girl was uh, wounded in the back. And a 20-year-old girl jumped out the window. Um... There was one survivor who called the authorities, and, um, you know, they had a hard time, I guess, hearing them, because they, of course, were were whispering. But um, after the attack, he put on his street clothes and drove his rental car to his brother's house. And um, then he was later found dead of a self-inflicted gunshot wound. I hate this more than anything. I hate it when they end up killing themselves like just kill yourself in the first place why you gotta torture everybody you know if if you're one of these people that gets off on seeing you know what you've done to people 
Like, don't you want to stick around and see it out? Like, that at least makes some sense. No, no, but he ended up just killing himself. Um, you know, what a, what a jerk. But I guess he had prepared, uh, looks like he had prepared a, um, he intended to flee to Canada. Because, you know, I'm not going to find you in Canada. What a weirdo. But, um, you know, who knows? But it's just a really sad situation. I mean, yeah. So you're going to go and, and show up as a, in a Santa suit? That's just ridiculous. And, and then, you know, injure a little girl. I mean, that poor little girl, I'm sure, was scarred for life. And, I mean, hopefully she realized who it was, that it wasn't, you know, the real Santa. And, um, you know, she knew it was her ex-uncle, who was a uh, Uncle Psycho. <laughs> Ex-Uncle Psycho. <laughs> Um, and then we have, um, another lovely story also, uh, pertaining to, you know, exes and things. Apparently Christmas brings out the hatred for your ex. Uh, this was in, let's see here, 2011, uh, a Santa suited gunman killed six people on Christmas morning. Uh, he was the estranged husband of one of the victims and father of two of the teenagers who died in the massacre. Here's his name. Aziz Yazdanpana. Bless you. Let me say that again. Aziz Yazdanpana. I'm pretty Aziz. sure, you know, if that was my name, I'd probably, you know. I'd shorten it. I'd just crime. go like, I'm Aziz. You I'm know, Aziz, like... you. Yeah, yeah. Aziz Yaz. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, he kills up, shows up to his uh, ex-wife's apartment, dressed like Santa, opens fire um, on the family after they had uh, unwrapped presents, and again he killed himself. He also killed his kids. He killed his sister-in-law, brother-in-law, and his niece. Unbelievable. Apparently, he um, owned a ranch in Texas. That's where this happened, and they had a big party the night before. Um, you know, it was a nice party. Everybody was getting along, so who knows, um, you know, how long he had planned that. But um, just uh, know that, you know, if you are getting a divorce or thinking of getting a divorce, apparently don't do it around the holidays because you're... X will dress up like Santa and try to kill you and your family. So, Merry freaking Christmas. What do you think about that, Balls? <laughs> I just am thinking about how, how these people come and, like, uh, like, like Aziz is coming to the door and they're like, oh, you know, does he fool anybody? Like, does people really think it's Santa? Like, right. oh, wow, it's Santa. That ain't Santa. He, Santa doesn't break, break, speak broken English, you know? Right? I, fuck, I think it's Aziz. Everybody jump on the couch. I know, I mean, right? Like, yeah. I mean, just, and how sad is that to, like, you know... To, you motherfuckers, I show you for this Christmas you're going to with the death and dying. I know, man. What, it's ridiculous. You know, like, why do we need to make Santa the, the evil man? Why does Santa need to be... You know. At least dress up like Krampus. I mean, yeah, that uh, would make more sense at least. Yeah, you know? I mean, geez, Santa's getting a bad rap between Silent Night, Deadly Night, and, uh, you know, all these fucking comedians. Uh, mm. I don't know. Speaking of, uh, speaking of other, all the Santa stuff, and we, we saw a funny article uh, the other day on Facebook I shared with, uh, with Balls here, and apparently this uh, guy dressed as Santa was uh, flipping out in the mall or something because I don't even know what happened. Would you, did you even read the article I sent you? <laughs> he was spazzing out because of, I forget what happened. And there was a, some big misunderstanding. And, and it wasn't he telling the kids to get the fuck out of here. Yeah, pretty much. He stood up, threw off his beard and in front of like 50 little kids waiting in line to get their picture taken with the mall Santa starts screaming, get the fuck out of here. Fuck you all! And, uh, yeah, needless to say, um, the police intervened, and uh, Mall Santa was brought to the ground, and little kids were shattered lives everywhere. <laughs> shattered brains everywhere. <laughs> no, 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 I don't mean that. That sounds terrible. There was no massacre. There was no killing. <laughs> I'm getting ahead of myself. Um, but, no, Santa was just, like, a big dickhead and lost his shit. 
Santa lost his shit. I mean, you think they would have a screening process for a lot of these dudes, man. I mean, it seems like every person they get to, uh, to get these little shit bags to sit on their lap, I mean, they always end up being, like, alcoholics or mm-hmm. murderers or drug addicts. I mean... You know, at least be a little fucking selective. Don't go out the street and see the dude that's sticking a needle in his arm. And go, hey, you want to make fifty bucks and have kid have a kid sit on your lap and be? So, yeah, sure, fuck, I'll do it. Let's go. I mean, uh, yeah. Let me see if I can pull this up. I read about this guy, Bruce MacArthur. He was the mall Santa Claus in Toronto, and for years he was the mall Santa. People loved him. Uh, turns out, for years he was also a serial killer. <laughs> yeah, don't you love that? So, you know, your little Johnny sat on a serial killer's lap, and then meanwhile, um, you know, he went out and committed some murders. I mean, isn't that great? It's just amazing. But yeah, he, you celebrate Christmas your way. You let Bruce celebrate his that's way. That's right. He <laughs> celebrated his way, all right. So, you know, you just never know. I mean, you might want to be, you know, <laughs> I don't know where they find these people. I mean, geez, Louise. I mean, I think of... The first thing you think about when you are hiring Santa Claus to come to your mall would be background check, hello. I mean, now granted, this guy hadn't been caught for anything, so of course, how do you know? So I guess it could be, you know, he was just that good. And um, I mean, I pray he wasn't, uh, you know, like setting it up for, you know, I'm going to go find these people at their house and, and kill them. And oh, I can't even imagine. Yeah, mm, creepy. Yeah, but uh, people dressed like Santa creep me out, man. Uh, yeah, yeah, I have to say, I, I was always a little, uh, I don't have, like, good memories of uh, growing up and going to the department store and uh, getting my picture of Santa. I always thought it was really kind of spooky in a way. Like, mm-hmm. I never really, I never believed it was him. I always thought it was just kind of creepy. So, I mean, uh, mm-hmm. you know, that's, a, that's a tradition, I think, that needs to kind of stop or go away. Mm-hmm. I mean, uh, I, yeah, I don't want to sound like a Scrooge, but I mean... Uh, I mean, really, yeah, but really, then we wouldn't have all these wonderful screaming baby pictures with fake Santa's, you know. That's but I mean, look at that. Yeah, you but know? look at the assholes that take their fucking animals to go get pictures. Oh of my Santa. gosh! We're in a fucking mall the other day, cats, and uh, we go by, and there's a fucking line like six miles long. All these fucking morons taking their fucking. And then you hear a woof. Their kids to woof. get or their fiery kids to get fucking pictures of Santa. In the middle of Can the you mall. imagine being the poor motherfucker that has to fucking. Be the Santa Claus for fucking uh, these assholes and animals, you know? Yep, yep. Yeah, and there was, like, little dogs, but there was, like, freaking... I seen German Shepherds. Yeah, I that's the bulldogs. Santa Claus I fucking feel sorry for, you yeah. know? They're hoisting a the goddamn German Shepherd up on a fucking Santa Claus. probably pissing on his leg while... <laughs> they, yeah, they, they never looking at the camera, you know? Like, it was like, come on, Wolfie, look at the camera. Come on, Wolfie, look at the camera. This goes on for, like, 20 minutes. You know, he's like, I'm gonna go home and fucking... This is it, man. I'm get, I, I'm, I, I get on a stool every night. I put the noose around my neck. Tonight's the night I'm kicking this motherfucker out from my yeah. room. You know, work, booze, work, booze. I mean, I don't know. Yeah, so, I don't know, man. What other, we have other, any other Santa no, wait, wait, No, but I, I actually, actually had a question for you. Oh, boy. A holiday question. Mm. I want to know, ex uh, what was the best gift there, best memory of Christmas uh, you had growing up? Hmm. Mm. I mean, I have a. I mean, I have a lot. Like it's hard to say. Like I don't have any specific. I have, I have quite a few, really. I had a. I had a really good childhood. I mean, I could. I could surely complain. You know, like it wasn't. You know, my neighbors were richer and they got more stuff. But, you know, especially now in this day and age, watching like all this, being involved in all the depravity stories and this and that. Jesus. Makes my family look like the freaking Waltons or something. I mean, w- which we were no means that way. But, um, you know, I remember at a very young age, you know, four or five years old, my mom would throw these fabulous Christmas Eve parties and we'd have the, the music going on and, the, you know, you'd have Johnny Mathis's Christmas album going, Elvis's Christmas album, and the neighbors would start coming in and, you know, it was exciting because, you know, I liked having people come to my house. I was a very introverted child, but, but you know, when they were coming to my turf, it was cool. And then usually, of course, they were bringing me gifts, so that, that was really nice, too. So I really enjoyed all that. I mean, I have funny memories. Like, my mom used to make these things called rum balls. <laughs> and, um, and, I mean, they did have rum in them, but, like, I don't even know. I mean, just... 
thinking about them, I can smell them, and ugh. I mean, even to this day, I wouldn't eat them, uh, you know, but it was funny because the, my granny didn't like them either, and she'd make this funny face, would try to make her eat these rum balls, and she'd be like, she'd make this crinkled up granny face, and it was just amusing, and then, um, you know, I remember, I think I was six years old, and my, my well, Santa, but, you know, in hindsight, uh, I found out, you know, Santa might not have been Santa after all, and, uh, but I was in first grade, uh, six years old, and got a new record player, and what albums did Santa bring me, but... Rod Stewart's Do You Think I'm Sexy? <laughs> and Rick James. I oh, mean, yeah, Super Freak. Super Freak, yeah. So, you know, everything a six year old girl in the early 80s wants, that you sounds know? fucking badass. Um, but, yeah, I mean, so I don't know. In hindsight, it's hilarious and it makes my mother super cool. But at the time, I'm like, what? <laughs> but of course, I listened to them and I loved it. And as a six year old girl, I ran around singing, Do You Think I'm Sexy? <laughs> How great is that? <laughs> that? That's pretty good, man. Oh, I have Lord. To say. <laughs> but yeah, that, that was, uh, I had a pretty decent childhood, I gotta say. Christmas morning was always magical. How about you, Balls? I mean, mine's kind of bittersweet, man. I mean, I grew up as, uh, you know, uh, my folks didn't have a lot of money. But, I mean, I do remember having some really nice memories, some good memories of Christmas. I mean, uh, I was always close with my grandparents, and sometimes I feel like, uh, you know, I could have been their kid. But uh, they always went to extra lengths to make sure we really had a nice and merry Christmas. So, I mean... You know, uh, we all collectively come together as a, you know, family, and uh, we all, uh, I can remember some of my fondest memories as I uh, go, we'd all go over my grandparents, and uh, they'd make sure they'd have the spiral ham, and we'd have a big feast, and uh, everybody would bake, we'd have poppy seed rolls, and mm. uh, nut rolls, and all kinds of, we'd pride press, I'd help my mom press pizzelles, mm. we'd make uh, them fucking cookies with the fucking, uh, you know, the, uh, Heard you kiss in the middle. Mm -hmm. was that peanut butter blossom? We make all that kind of shit from the Russian cookbook, you know, uh, which is really good. I mean, uh, I don't know if you cats know, but like, uh, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a good uh, part Lithuanian, and uh, my in my family they have this Russian Orthodox cookbook, and uh, I tell you what, man, everything in it is just amazing. I wish I had a copy of it. It's like been passed down from generation to generation. Mm. And then you know we'd have the tree put up, and mm -hmm. we'd all uh, you know. Play. Uh, they play the piano. They had a piano and organ in the basement. We'd have people jamming on that, and we'd nice. sing. And uh, I remember, you know, when I'd always, uh, you know, we might not have a lot of dough, but uh, I always ended up, getting, I ended up somehow getting what I wanted. I mean, I remember mm -hmm. one year, I think my mom saved up uh, Kool-Aid points, uh, and you know, I got my first uh, one of my first cassettes. I mean, the first cassette I ever bought with my own money was. Uh, it's probably a surprise a lot of you, uh, Run DMC Raising Hell, uh, <laughs> but I, because I, I was kind of June bugging in the day, back in the day, as you all know, I've told those stories, but, uh, you know, the first one I got as a gift, my mom got me Tina Turner, Private Dancer, and I tell you what, I love the shit out of it, man, oh I used gosh, to Brian. play, I used to play the shit out of it, I, I was one of the first albums that really, uh, made an impact on me, I mean, it sounds, it sounds, uh, funny to some, but I mean, I, I still love Tina Turner to this day, I think she's an incredible mm -hmm. artist. And uh, just very groundbreaking at my age. And uh, i got to say, the gifts that stood out in my mind, though, that changed my life forever. I mean, uh, I, uh, I'd i always, well, I think the big thing was uh, Optimus Prime that year when I was a kid. And <laughs> my mom uh, told me the story long years after how she had to wait in line for like 12 hours just to get my little asshole ass this Optimus Prime. Uh, oh, yeah. And uh, yeah, and I tell you, it was worth it. I still wish I had it to this day. It was mm -hmm. fucking great. But the, the thing that really totally changed my life forever and uh, pretty much put me in the uh, the nerd group and uh, the, uh, you know, not touching the tit till I was way in my teen years uh, group, I was like, my 8 bit Nintendo. Uh, I got 8 bit Nintendo, and I tell you what. Everything else in life didn't seem to matter anymore. I was Super Mario Brothers and Zelda and Metroid, and once I touched an 8-bit Nintendo, I had, you know, uh, yeah, there was no chance I was kissing a girl for at least another 10 years. So, uh, <laughs> uh, But I do have fond memories of uh, my grandparents' basement playing the shit out of Nintendo and watching Mystery Science Theater on, uh, you know, on Christmas, like I talked earlier in the show, and then on the Turkey Day Marathon, we'd do that. My buddy Jeff would come down, we'd jam Nintendo, Listen to Public Enemy and watch Mystery Science Theater. So that, to me, was wow. Christmas. So. <laughs> wow. Wow. 
That's incredible. <laughs> Pretty crazy. Pretty crazy. I love it, though. So I know you brought up something interesting that I was thinking about, too. Like, you know, the, the bummer about childhood is once you, you know, get over the whole Santa thing, the extra bummer is... Uh, and especially if you're unfortunate like Balls and I, uh, losing your grandparents at a very young age. I mean, I was, gosh, I think I was 21 and I had no grandparents left. So, like, they had all died, you know, before my 21st birthday. Um, and it's just, it changes the whole family dynamic. I mean, grand, grandma, grandpa, or whatever, one of your grandparents holds is the glue that holds the family together, basically. And once they're gone, I mean, it's just, it changes the whole dynamic. And it, it you know, yeah, you might still get together with an aunt or uncle or this one or that one and have the dinners there. But it's it's never, ever, ever the same and, you know, no matter how much you try to recreate that magic, it's just, it's gone forever. And it's really sad, and I'm not trying to be a bummer, but, I mean, I just wonder if everybody else feels that way, too, and if if it's just that same way. And, and you know, you go on to have your own families, and then you do your own sort of thing, and you can still have great times and all, but it, it just ultimately changes the whole the whole way Christmas is, to me, anyhow. How about you both? Same well, it's funny that you mention that because, I mean, whenever my grandparents were, in fact, living, I was the first one to say, like, once they go, none of us are ever going to get together again. I mean, uh, not like this. Mm -hmm. I mean, like you said, uh, you get together here and there. You go right. to dinner. Occasionally you'll go and see somebody or they'll come down for a holiday or here and there. But, uh, you know, they're the polymer that keeps the family together. And uh, it has, in fact, never been and it never will be the same. I mean, we do, in fact, have those memories, though, which, in fact, is how we keep them going, which is nice, and that's something that, uh, you know, you always have. But, I mean, yeah, it's never the same. I'm, I mean, I, my, my, I was fortunate enough to have them to, like, my late 20s, early 30s, and I tell you what, man, it still seems like it happened yesterday to me. Mm -hmm. Like, that's, uh, that was one of the hardest things to, uh, I don't even think I'm still over it. So, mm -hmm. I mean, I can't even imagine people that lose their... You know, their parents, parents or their mom or that, age, but yeah, yeah. I just don't know how, you, uh, how to do that. I mean, I don't want to bum you cats off for Christmas, but I mean, uh, you know, the, the the thing I was just discussing with Xtina the other day is, I mean, uh, I think it's very important to, uh, to not only talk about the good part of Christmas, but there is a very dark side uh, of Christmas as well. And when I say that, uh, what I mean is, you know, you have to look at the, the dark side of Christmas too, because it makes you appreciate the things that you really do have. I mean, we take so much for granted as a nation, as a country, individually, on an everyday basis. And I, I think it's nice to take this time to reflect, I mean, uh, just the little things that we do have that, you, in fact, can't be bought with money or, I mean... Uh, just giving somebody your time. Or, well, that's uh, what it's supposed to be about, but of course we've all lost sight of that. Well, I mean, years, nobody you know? celebrates the true meaning of Christmas. It's mm -hmm. all blatant commercialism. I mean, I wish more people would celebrate. I'd be more impressed if somebody said, hey, I'm you know, celebrating the birth of Christ and we're not going to have all this pageantry and we're just going to get together as a family and have dinner and fucking share some memories or make some memories. And people get too caught up in the shit. I mean, I was talking about at the beginning of the show. I'm fucking stressed out. I've had a migraine almost every fucking day. And I know it's because of that bullshit. I haven't done one ounce of Christmas shopping. And it's driving me nuts. And, like, I don't think there's way too much emphasis on buying a perfect gift instead of, you know, making memories that you're always going to have in the future to think about. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I'd like to take this time to, you know, uh, people should think about <laughs> the depressing part of Christmas. I mean, people that have nothing are going to get nothing and... Christmas is the shittiest time of their fucking year. Like, right. I mean, uh, it's the most depressing and, and the most hurtful. So, I mean, you know, try to pay it forward this Christmas or at least, uh, you know, pay attention to the people around you that may need something mm -hmm. other than a fucking gift. So, yeah. I mean, do at least one good deed. I mean, I, I've heard of people, and, I, and you see it sometimes on like cheesy little TV shows where like the family goes to you know, help feed the homeless or what have you at the food bank on Christmas. But I swear I want to do that one of these days. You know, something like I that. I mean, even if it's as simple as going to, like, fucking McDonald's and paying for the next dude's coffee. I mean, right, it's right. just some little fucking, you know, uh, token of, uh, you know, that you, to your fellow man. I mm -hmm. mean, uh, 
I know it's surprising to hear this from me. I fucking hate people. You know I hate people. If you listen to the show regularly, I'm a miserable motherfucker that hates people. But <laughs> I also believe that there's good people out there. And uh, mm-hmm. I don't believe that there's as many as X Tina would like to believe. But uh, <laughs> I definitely think that there's still some. So, I mean, mm-hmm. uh, on this Christmas, I don't want to bum you cats out. I'm going to you know lighten it up a little bit here, definitely. But, uh, you know, uh, enjoy your Christmas, but, uh, you know, pay attention to others, too. I mean, uh, I find us, we've become a really selfish fucking country, and so it's, mm-hmm. uh, it'd be nice to try to change that a little bit, you know? Yeah, it should be what it's about, you know, giving, giving forward, paying it forward, doing some, some one kind gesture. Won't kill you, trust me. And don't forget to say happy birthday to the baby Jesus. That's all I'm trying to say. So. All right, happy birthday, baby Jesus. Yeah. All right. Well, that being said, cats, I'm uh, I got some uh, some closing up to do. I'm gonna leave you with a couple uh, couple more Christmas tunes before we get out of here. I uh, but but first of all, uh, X Tina, did you know that we have a YouTube channel now? I did know that. You did. I did. Well, uh, if you go to YouTube, as I mentioned before, and you type in "balls from Elwood." And you click on videos, you are going to have access to every fucking show we've did since the very beginning. Including this one that you're hearing now. Wow, I can't wait. So oh, wait, I've already subscribed. How about that? <laughs> yeah, and you should too out there. So, And also, if you would like to get in touch with either I or Xtina for any reason, you know where to go. What is that email address? Oh, I know what it is. It is Wendy Chops at 1976. No, it's not Wendy Chups uh, at 1976. Oh, fuck. See, I don't even know. See, See this goddamn old is stressing. Wendy, 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 Wendy Chops, 1976 at Gmail. Com. What would I do without you? Holy I fuck! Don't know, man. I don't know. See this goddamn Christmas shit's killing me. But anyway, Wendy Chops, 1976 at Gmail dot com. Also, if you would like to. Pay it forward and, you know, maybe perhaps uh, give us a little gift uh, for entertaining your sorry asses all the time. You could feel free to. What's that again? PayPal us at. What is that again? (laughs) CVL929 at yahoo.com. And one last thing, cats. If you, it's still not too late, if you would like to give the gift of a cameo video. By one of the shittiest callers on the Howard Stern Show, please feel free to hit me up on Cameo. I'm under balls from Elwood. I, for the very measly price of $5. Yes, not 100. I will, uh, not 100 anymore, so take advantage of this. I mean, I don't know how much longer this is going to last. Oh, you, know, <laughs> you motherfucker. <laughs> I, <laughs> that was pretty good next to you. I will not only record you a message, I will... Say pretty much anything you want. I will whore myself out for five dollars. What is that? Fucking uh, twenty quarters. I will say whatever the fuck you want, cats. I'll say uh, you know, uh, I don't know. Like uh, what do you? Whatever you want me to say. I'll call myself a cocksucker. You know, I'll uh, I'll say I drink camel jizz. I don't know. Whatever the fuck you want. Five, twenty quarters. Five bucks. I'm gonna whore myself out. So it's not too late to have me do a Christmas message for you, your loved ones. I'll call them a cocksucker. Hey, five bucks. All you got to do. Go on Cameo. Hit me up. So is there anything else you would like to uh, like to talk about before we wrap this up, x Tina? No, no. I think we've covered a good bit, and uh, I think this is a fabulous holiday episode, and hope you all have a uh, lovely holiday season and a happy freaking new year. To all a good night. God bless us, everyone. I'm going to leave you now, cats, before we uh, close up here. I'm going to try to brighten it up a little bit. I'm going to leave you with a little Dr. Dirty song, uh, which I think is pretty funny. Uh, his name's John Valby. He does, like, dirty Christmas carols and other songs, but uh, always been a favorite of mine. And after that, I'm going to close on what would Christmas, what any self-serving Christmas special be without one of the best Christmas songs ever made, without the Ramones. We're going to end on... Uh, Merry Christmas, I don't want to fight tonight. And then until then, cats, uh, you might see us next week. Uh, you might see us after New Year's. I mean, it all depends. Just keep checking it out. Uh, we're going to be pretty busy. I got some great interviews coming up. As I said, I don't want to give them away right now, but uh, you got that coming up. But other than that, enjoy the songs. I hope all you out there in uh, Balls Land have a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Peace and love. Peace.